Hello everyone and welcome back to another session. Today's session is especially very interesting for our programmers over here. So have you ever felt that your IDE is lacking some features or is very uh, heavy on your CPU? Well, fear not. In today's session, we'll be showing you how you can code your custom IDE with just Python and Tkinter. So let's get started. So in today's workshop, we'll be using Tkinter. Now Tkinter is Python's de facto standard GUI or graphical user interface package and it is a thin object oriented layer on top of the TCL or the TK. Now Tkinter is not the only GUI programming toolkit for Python but it is the most widely used and the most commonly used GUI uh, toolkit for Python and it is also very easy to use and there are a lot so there is a lot of uh, support and uh, help that you can get while using it if you run into an error because of the documentation and of course there is a, a large number of people who actually use it. Then we have uh, the overview of what we will be covering today. So we will be building uh, an IDE for now to run Python programs and that will allow you to customize it. So you can be, you can customize it as you want. You can save documents, save as document. You can, you'll have the option to save as a new document. You can run the code. You can change the layout or the colors over there and much, much more. So, and you can also add on to these features and add or remove whatever you feel is required or necessary for your requirement. And yeah, that's basically it. So let's get started. Let's get coding. Okay, let's start coding our uh, custom IDE. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to create a sample tkinter GUI so that we can see actually what's going on and type in the code there. So that's exactly what we'll do. So we'll say from tkinter import everything. And then, then next what we can do is we'll create a window. So we'll name it window, window equals, and then we'll say tk. And finally, we can run it. So we can say window uh, dot main loop, and we can save the code and open up our command prompt and run it. So yeah, there it is. This is our. This is the start of our process. So we have built a GUI which looks very empty right now. Notice one thing that it says TK as a label. So we'll change that in a bit, but let's move on so okay so when we want to change the label we can say window dot title and we can change that so previously it was just saying tk we can call it uh, custom ide let's just call it my custom ide save it and uh, it should have the title over there now what we need next is we need to have some kind of a place to type in the code so for that what we will do is we will create we will create over here something called uh, let's just call it text editor so we'll create text editor equals text and it will be a text uh, widget from the tkinter and uh, uh, yes next thing we need to do is to pack so text editor dot pack make sure it's there in our gui and we can now try running the code again and see what happens. Okay, so here we have our GUI. Notice how the silver color changed to white color and now I'm able to type it in. I can type whatever, but nothing's happening yet. But, but it's still a progress. And obviously the name has also, the title has also changed to my custom ID. So we're moving in the right direction with just very few lines of code. Okay. Now, next, what we want to do is we want to create some type of a button that we can click and run the program. So for that, we, what we will do is we'll create a menu bar to hold the button, like just like it's over here. So uh, there is the run button. We will try to create something of this sort in over here. So let's try that. Try doing that. So for creating the menu and the button, we need to first create a menu, which is over here. We can type in, what should we call it? Let's call it uh, uh, menu, menu bar. Okay, 
menu bar and then you can equal it to uh, menu so you can say menu bar equals menu and then we can pass in our window so over here we have our window yes this will create a menu bar now what we need to do next is we also need to create another bar which which will hold actually which will actually hold the button so what we can call it is uh, let's call it the run bar equals again menu and then this time around we will pass in the menu bar which we had already created and yep one last thing is that we can say menu uh, sorry run bar run bar dot add we can add, add some configuration so we'll say add uh, sorry not configuration add wait uh, add command it is yes not uh, add command and then we will give it a label so that we know the what's the button actually used for or what's it called so we'll call it label equals run right okay one last thing is we will add all this to the now we'll add the run bar to the menu bar so we'll say menu bar dot add cascade now this is how it will appear on the on the GUI and then we'll just name it run as well so let's run it and see what happens okay yeah okay before we run it I forgot that we need to place another thing over here which is menu we we'll need we we'll actually need to pass it where uh, the name of the thing so we'll just call it the run bar right so the menu is the run bar and yep the menu bar is now connected to attach to the run bar so let's just save our code and try running it okay right okay uh, okay it's not there uh, because I made a very silly mistake I actually didn't add it to the window so let me just uh, do that window.config and then add in the menu so menu equals uh, equals the menu in the name of the menu that we created which is the menu bar in our case okay let's hope I did not do anything wrong and run it again okay yes now it's there and we can see that we have a run button and when we click on it we get this run button over here now we do get this annoying dotted line as well which does something weird but let's try to remove this we can easily remove it so the way we remove it is we can simply go over here where we declared our run bar and we can say tear off and then equal to zero tear off equals zero save the code try running it again and we shouldn't have that again okay now we have everything looking perfect so yes let's move on to the next stage which is actually running the code and that's something that is more important so to actually run the code that's written in our text editor on our GUI we will create a function and we'll call it uh, run my code for example or no not run my code and run my code and in this function what we basically are trying to do is to actually first get the text text that is written and then based on and then run or execute the text or whatever is written in the text so first we need to get the text and how we do it is text editor dot get it's really simple and we need to define from what location we need to start getting the text and we'll get it from one which is the starting position and the second one is the ending position so we need to we'll get it till the end so the entire thing we will get the entire text and just to see if this works we will first try printing it so we'll just print the text okay let me okay let me just create a variable store this in a variable called code yep and this should work and I spelled print wrong okay and now this should work but one last thing we need to do is we need to connect it to our run button so we need to say command equals to 
uh, run my code so that it actually knows that when this button is pressed I need to run this code this part of the code or this method so let's save our code and try to run it okay so let's see what happens okay so we have our editor over here and we can say for i in range 10 print i right let me just copy and keep this for next time and try running it so on the command prompt you can see that it's actually printed the entire text as is so yeah this is something that's not be required we require it to actually run the code so that is very simple now you won't believe me so i just told you that you simply need to change this print command to exec and it would automatically run the code next time let's try so let's run the same command again and open up the our ide and let's just paste it oh wait uh, let me just for never mind i think my okay for i in uh, range uh, let's print 10 numbers and we can say print i okay and let's run it all right so over here as you can see on our command prompt it actually printed the uh, zero, 10 numbers from 0 to 9 rather than printing this statement as it was doing previously so yeah that's how we can run our commands okay so let's move on now what other functionality we need to implement is we need to have some kind of mechanism to open other files save our code and these type of functionalities so we'll try to implement them now okay so let's just copy the these three lines and paste them here and change the name of course so we'll make it file bar and reflect the name changes the name over here and yes okay so what basically this command does is it creates a button like this but oh sorry this command the ask the add cascade it creates something like this but when we have to define what the inner buttons are specified as this is the command that comes into play which says the add command so over here this you can think of as this line over here and the functions or the buttons that are actually over here are these so our first one will be options or no, sorry not options or rather open and this will be our file menu so inside our file menu we will have the child I, the children uh, items as open save so we might have to copy this file or this line several times and paste it okay we have the open we have the save let's have another one for save as then we have uh, finally we have the exit now we need to change the code or the 